The new Australian Health and PE curriculum will really help teachers to present a contemporary, cohesive view of health and PE that will serve kids as they are now and give them the knowledge, skills and understandings to help them in the future. It's quite exciting that it will allow teachers and students to be able to explore the issues that are important to them in a safe way. It's a first cohesive, contemporary, national initiative that will give uh, a learning guarantee to Australian students for the very first time and will then for, be able to have, I guess, a national conversation amongst teachers for the very first time. The sort of framework and direction and guidance that this curriculum can give those generalist teachers um, particularly in and around the movement skills and the development of fundamental movement skills and development of movement capabilities, where it provides a framework for them to develop their, their confidence and their competence and their understanding about delivering quality movement experiences for students. It's got two strands, personal, social and community health and movement and physical activity. They've got substrands to them, but cross-cutting that, we've got 12 focus areas. By having that structure, we're allowing for integration where appropriate of those two strands. And that integration will then mean that teachers have really rich units and that time is used most effectively. The curriculum really acknowledges the diversity of students in the classroom, the diversity of relationships that they will have, and the diversity of families and cultures that they come from. I think it'll be an opportunity for teachers to do things differently, to do things that, can, that really connect with students in, in contemporary Australia. The context we live in is a fast-paced, changing environment. We have a lot of technology that never existed before, which brings opportunities and changes in structure of how our society functions. So we have young people who engage with other young people online and face to face. So the curriculum actually reflects that. Relationships and sexuality is an important part of teaching in a school. This curriculum just makes that more explicit and really clearly helps teachers to know what to teach and when. Young people in rural and remote schools have got very different resources and possibly interests to those who might be in an inner city school. So that flexibility, I think, is, is really important. Every teacher is a teacher of wellbeing and at our core is actually having a young person who feels good about themselves. By taking a strengths-based approach, you're looking at the resources that a person might have and it's not just about money or objects. Everybody has got something to build on, whether they can connect with their family or there are some community connections they can make in order to lead uh, a safer, healthier, more active life. The most exciting part of the mental health and wellbeing aspect, the focus area of this curriculum, is the fact that it can teach young people the skills that they need and it give them a toolkit to pick and choose from through all aspects of their life, whether they do have a mental health and underlying mental health disorder or they, or they just want to feel happier and well. The development of, of fundamental movement skills, as we would call them in the profession, they're the foundation for, for development of all movement for kids and then into um, adulthood. So to develop the fundamental movement skills through primary school to, to um, put the building blocks into place through kindergarten into about year two and then to be able to um, build on those and develop students' abilities around um, reinforcing those fundamental movement skills really does set the platform for students then moving into a secondary context where they're able to specialise in a whole range of movement contexts, whether those be team games, individual, recreational, adventure type activities. Um, and then to be able to reinforce those habits and behaviours, I guess almost build off the natural enthusiasm that young people bring to school around movement and around play and exploring their movement potential and to really take advantage of those um, early years of education where we can certainly 
put in place those building blocks for movement, as we put in the building blocks for reading and writing, we can put in place those building blocks for movement and work off those natural enthusiasm and excitement that uh, children bring into certainly the early years of primary school for moving. In the physical activity and movement strand, students will very explicitly learn a range of movement uh, skills and, and knowledge about the movement. But while they're doing that, they will also develop a range of other skills such as teamwork, leadership, taking responsibility, developing relationships. Uh, to know yourself well, uh, to be a confident and resilient young person and a resilient adult, and to be able to function well um, as an adult and to have great relationships and to know where to get help when you need it or when a young person that you know um, also needs it. It's also important so that they can make safe, informed, mutual decisions about the relationships that they have in their lives. Look, the opportunities that we'll have now to um, share resources uh, across the nation, um, to share best practice across the nation, is, is going to be a really exciting time. Yeah.